Hello, my name is Al, and today I want to look at some weird glitches in kind of a little somewhat niche genre of Pokemon games. That's the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon has captured the hearts of many, including myself. These games came out a while ago, and they have their own fair share of little things that aren't always supposed to be happening some glitches some weird stuff and i want to go over that today i've done glitch videos before so definitely check out those but you know eh, let's go into the a little more niche one mystery dungeon so the first game that came out was red rescue team for the gba after that came blue rescue team for the ds and this is where i want to jump in with the big big glitch game running thing so you know, back then, uh, your Nintendo DS or your Nintendo DS Lite was able to have two games inside of it. You had your DS cartridge, and then you had your GBA slot if you wanted to put some GBA games inside. And this allowed developers also to make the two games sometimes interact with each other uh, because it was, you know, a unique console that could do this. But there were some challenges with Pokemon Blue Rescue Team. The Japanese 1.0 version. So it had a funny quirk of deleting save data on the GBA. So you pop in your Blue Rescue Team game, and um, if you have something in the GBA slot, it would just delete files. So what is happening here? We can look at an IGN article back from 2005 that might shed some light. So the fun feature was to have these games hook up, and it works fine when you're trying to link up Red Rescue Team with the DS game by plugging it into the DS directly. Um, but then there's a problem that arises when you would plug in the game other than the Red Rescue Force and you put it into the DS GBA slot while Red Rescue Force is running. And that will cause save data to be lost, potentially. The article even ends just, you know, Instead of getting a replacement and having that headache, keep your copy of Blue Rescue Force and make sure to keep anything but Red Rescue Force out of the GBA slot while playing. Oh, good. Oh, goodness. Nowadays, we can always just rely on patches and things, but yeah, that was a major, major hiccup. And that is how we start with a bang. So, wonderful. Of course, this got fixed in the international release of the game and everything, but nevertheless, it is still something to be talked about. Now, the next glitch I want to talk about is one that I think is pretty well known. So basically, boss Pokemon have a whole lot of HP, as one would expect for a boss to have, obviously. Yet, you can recruit bosses in the games. And normally it means that this beast is brought down to a more respectable HP value, except for under circumstances of this glitch. By placing a reviver seed on the ground, letting the boss pick it up, you can lead to getting a huge boss HP value rather than the more respectable number. As if it wasn't cool enough to have such a Pokemon join your rescue team, it's great that you'll be able to have the boss power to back it up. You can see some different snapshots of players who have experienced this, and you know, it's been calculated even the best of the best being, I think, Deoxys with like 950 HP that you could get. It's crazy. So that is some way that players <laughs> could easily do this with, you know, a tiny little Reviver Seed placed and picked up and all that. So interesting stuff. And then we're going to go into like our main chaotic agent, okay? What I mean is this Kecleon. Now, Kecleon is already infamous in the games because he has his iconic shop and everything with his like, you know, weird brother as well. He's purple for some reason. He's got his shop and sometimes you'll see him in the dungeons putting up shop. And I think many kids have the collective experience of trying to steal from Kecleon in mystery dungeon games and getting absolutely destroyed by him when you do. But he is also chaotic in the sense that there's a few glitches around Kecleon. So this first one is one that could benefit you. Infinite money glitch, okay? So there's a way you could trick him into this infinite money glitch of sorts by going to a shop that you would find inside a mystery dungeon, dropping an item in there, quick saving in place, restarting the game, and then Kecleon thinks he sold it, and he'll just continue to pay you. So note though that the first time this is done, he does pay the sell price in full, 
He does pay the full sell price, but then after that he cuts the price in half. Nevertheless, you can continue to speak with him again and again and just get paid. And you can net a lot of coin that way for your adventure. I think this goes without saying, but I'd love to hear your own experiences with some of these glitches if you have them, or, you know, anything I might miss. Let's go on to another Kecleon thing, the Kecleon Recruitment Glitch. Say you want to have this powerful ally join you, if only temporarily. Well, you can. Putting yourself next to Kecleon, you can then wait for an enemy to appear and begin attacking. They need to attack Kecleon, and once they do, you have found yourself an ally. Because if you have a pass scarf, you can use that to go about this, and it passes a move to a nearby Pokemon. And with this happening, Kecleon might just start following you as though he was recruited. You can't hit him or anything, not that you would want to do that to your new ally, but you can definitely walk around. Unfortunately, this doesn't stay active once you leave the place you're in, but it's a neat little interaction to observe. Now the aggressive Kecleon glitch. So trying to steal from Kecleon can easily get you killed. Because the Kecleon that you fight during that sequence is a straight up boss. But say you haven't stolen any items. In that case, there exists a way to still get a very hostile Kecleon to deal with. This happens when you attack Kecleon with a Blast Seed or the Pokemon Move Explosion, and Kecleon will get aggressive. But this aggressive Kecleon isn't the same level as a boss like the other. It can also be defeated. Stepping on items still shows price tags as if they are purchasable, but you can't pay while the hostile Kecleon is rampaging on the map still. And then, of course, the early games had their fair share of weird little glitches and things, like graphical glitches even. Sometimes while in a dungeon, you could just see Pokemon sprites be incorrectly displayed, where it might flash as one Pokemon, but then to another, and keep going like that. Um, I really like the weird little graphical glitches that come up. They are very unique and interesting. I think the next one is going to be a 10 character name glitch. In North American releases of the game, Explorers of Sky, the game will softlock if the player attempts to evolve a Pokemon whose nickname consists of exactly 10 characters, unless it was the last Pokemon obtained. This glitch was actually fixed in the European version of the game, but not in the Australian version. And uh, yeah, I think that's another thing. You gotta just not do that, <laughs> or else you're gonna get this stuck situation. Ah! So the false thief glitch is interesting. It falls in Explorers of Time and Darkness, where sometimes wild Pokemon hold items that are dropped when they're defeated. Um, I mean, that goes across all games, but you're able to pick them up. And in this game, it's no different. Pick them up as usual. But if a wild Pokemon faints in a shop and drops their item, and then you pick it up like usual, Kecleon will not only consider it his property, but now stolen property. Oh dear. Let's look at the 3D games now. Let's look at Gates to Infinity real fast with another minor thing. It's Mien Fu and this dialogue oversight. So when you play as the partner Pokemon, after the player Pokemon has returned to the human world and has yet to return to the Pokemon world, the Mien Fu acquainted with the team will salute the partner Pokemon with a morning player's name instead of morning partner's name. So. I had my account Pokemon thing Oshawott under Al, and Bika was my partner. And while I played as Bika, he should be saying hello Bika like everybody else in town. But no, he says morning Al. You can probably find other little things, graphical things as well with the games, like even just weird things like superior walking kind of weird as a uh, superior when you evolve from Snivy in Gates to Infinity, I believe. So the walking animation might fail to loop correctly when walking slowly in an area outside a dungeon, such as Paradise Center. And, you know, minor things as well pop up in Super Mystery Dungeon, like strong winds and whatnot. In Super Mystery Dungeon, we can see this interesting glitch that makes Pokemon, like, big, take up the screen, or, you know, just be in your face. 
with graphic wise and like i said i love the graphical stuff you can kind of mess around with them trying to push the pokemon to places they shouldn't be visible like on here and it can kind of get them to be weird enough to like get big or float or something like that um i think it just takes a little bit of time but you could probably do this um i really like those things there's glitches still coming out today like a few months ago there was a recent glitch found by a Japanese player in the game, um, Mystery Dungeon, Explorers of Time, Darkness, and Sky, where apparently you can recruit any Pokemon. And recruiting any Pokemon means getting like normally unobtainable ones, like this pink Celebi, purple Kecleon, I don't know why his friend is over there, um, and stuff like that. And I'm not an expert in the community for this, I just want to compile everything. So, even on this one, there's a video you can check out for Salted Neos, who goes over the process of how to do this really well. Part of the reason I really like doing these videos and looking things up is just because it's really fun and entertaining to see this crazy stuff. But like I said, I'm no expert, so definitely check out videos of other creators if you want to try implementing some of these, um, because there are some great resources out there. I am sure that there's like more glitches out there and things or weird stuff that maybe haven't all been documented or maybe you all experienced them yourself and you could share your experiences too. These were, I think, just some well-known ones, but I hope this was an exciting read. I want to learn more, see more of these, but for now, I think this will do it. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I super appreciate it, and I really hope you enjoyed. Like I said, let me know your thoughts down below, and then I hope to see you next time.